there. However, for these two, three hours, babes, you're going to have to be okay. Good morning, y'all. It's the Multifaceted Mom, aka Latoya, and I'm here with another vlog. Let's get it. Let's go. But today, I am talking to my solo moms, my single moms, because let's be real, we've come to a reality that we did not want to come to. We didn't even think this would be our reality when we had kids. A lot of times, it's really because of the way we grew up. Okay, we was always at grandma house, we was always at mama house, grandpa, whatever. But these grandparents are not grandparenting anymore. And that's the problem for me. But that's fine because a lot of times it's not the grandparents fault. I think that I've come to the conclusion that times are just different now. You know, my grandma had the privilege to be a stay at home mom. And her primary responsibility was raising her children. That was her joy. And she didn't have to balance work, balance raising kids. So when her grandkids came along, she took just that much enjoyment into her grandkids as well. And me, I was the first one born, first grandchild, first niece, nephew, first niece, not nephew, on a family so I pretty much seen a different side I was at my auntie house my great aunt house I was a lot of my family was really involved in helping my mom you know fill in the gaps I'm not saying they took away from what she did but she had a village and that's the thing that's what I feel like our generation of parents are missing and uh, for a long time, I was very angry. I was very pissed because I had these expectations of my mom, of my family. Like, okay, you know, my auntie, my grandma, a lot of people were involved in pickups and drop-offs to school. Um, I was at my grandma's house. Um, I, I don't want to say every day, but I was at my, well, for a portion of the time, I was over my grandma's house every day after school waiting on my mom to come home sometimes we stay like it was just so much more involvement than I think these grandparents have now you know they call themselves having a life and as I recall my grandma's life revolved around her grandkids <laughs> but that's okay because just like us our generation we're changing you know, our parenting ways, we're changing the way we want the adults in our family that raised us or helped raise us to show up in our kids' lives uh, with these new rules. They have every right to change themselves. And it's also external factors that I want us to take into account. Um, but in this video, I want to really talk about how you can create a village for yourself because that's something that I had to do when I entered single solo married single momhood and then went to single parenthood like it was a drastic change um so let's get started i just have a few tips because i know i am not the only one struggling without a village and let's be real even sometimes people who are married have a problem finding a village because when i was married when my ex-husband wasn't working, he was active. And a lot of times, they kind of look at, family kind of look at you like, okay, y'all got each other. Why do y'all need anybody else? We're two adults. We're struggling here. Um, and when I became a married single mom, they still kind of had that same, you know, you're, you're two adults. Y'all can figure it out. But then when I became a single, single mom, it was it was a struggle um and i was like i have no breaks i was waking up with both my children i was taking lori to school working from home with my youngest baby and i did that all the way for 19 months because they finally at daycare they gotta go babes <laughs> they went to daycare and i was very happy i felt relieved um and now that's the part of my village. So before I went there and before I got to this journey, I had to figure out ways to relieve myself because I was going crazy. I was not showing up as the parent that I wanted to be. Um, 
I had a vision for me being a Zen mom. You know, you might know better on some things, but realistically, when your body has not had that break, has not had time to decompress, you need time to decompress, babe. Because you will show up like the hawk. I mean, like the, like Shrek. No, I said Shrek. Like the hawk, I had it right. You will show up angry as hell, mad as hell. You you know that your kids are just being kids, but you can't physically take it. So that's why we need breaks. Um, so since getting a divorce, I did have to find a different village. At first, when I was married, my mom was my only village. And like I said, the expectations I put on my mom to show up for me the way my grandma showed up was just unrealistic. Like my mom had a whole another child. I mean, it is her fault she had 10, 10 years apart kids, but that's not, you know, not my circus, not my monkeys. Um, but, you know, she had a job. She had a son. So she couldn't show up for me the way that my grandma was able to show up for her. And I had to come to accept that. And so what I did was I had to find other resources to help. I had to extend my help outside of her. So I decided to get my grandma involved, who is very old school. <laughs> Do not get me wrong. I was really dreading her watching my kids. Not because I knew I felt like she would hurt them or anything because she's a great grandma. But really because I felt like she didn't have the same patience that was needed to let kids be kids. You know, my babies are not robots. We're not... You know, you're seen and not heard over here. Like, they're they're lit. And that's okay because they're kids. So, I didn't feel like she could handle that. But, however, I kind of have to learn how to have hard and soft boundaries with her because my hard boundaries don't ever hit my kid. But, you know, baby, you know, they might, you know, get a little stern talking to. You know how grandmas have that mean look. And all they got to do is look at you and you kind of scared. I don't want my kids growing up to be scared. But, however... For these two, three hours, babes, you're going to have to be okay. You're going to have to be okay, you know, with the stern look, babes. I had to deal with it all my life, um, you know, with switches and some other stuff that y'all don't have to experience. However, you know, I had to open myself up to get that help. And I feel like a lot of people who don't have the help, who really struggle to have the help, they, they have a, it is people who offer the help. Let's be real. I had a lot of friends who offered to help watch my kids, but I felt like these are my kids. It was a pride thing. And that leads to my second point. The friends that have asked and offered to help, let them help, babes. It's not going to hurt you. Let them help because they are there because God placed them as a resource. So don't be too prideful to go ahead and use that resource. Um, when I was interviewing, for jobs in Texas, I used my friend who I literally, now she worked at a daycare, so I completely trusted her, but homegirl lived on the east side. And if you're from the west side of Michigan, you don't want to drive all the way to the east side. And I felt like our friendship was like, she was in school, we'd be like in and out of talking, but then we started to become closer and I'm like, I don't want to just drop two kids on you, sis, like they're lit. But let me tell you, them kids are, they act different with other people. They give mom everything. So my friend was like, oh yeah, they were so sweet, stuff like that. So the fears that you have, and that's what I'm saying, the fears that you have around other people watching your kids it may not be as bad as you think it would be. So I just challenge you to expand your village past the people that you expect to watch your kids. Once I got out of that mindset of, no, my mom is supposed to be the only person to watch my child, it helped me to actually be able to get that free time. I asked my best friend who has two kids of her own and she loves the kids, honey. She has the capacity for all them kids. I but she always offered. She said, Oh, they can spend a the night. They can spend a the night for the whole weekend. You need a break. And I was just like afraid to let myself have that break. But I went ahead and did it because a lot of times what we're told as single moms, solo moms, really a lot of black people for sure, or even immigrants or, um, you know, different uh, ethnicities and cultures, we're told that we need to struggle 
because that struggle is just a part of their life. No, babe, that is a scarcity mindset, okay? And we'll be talking about that in the next video. Scarcity mindset. We don't do that over here. So another thing I did, and I think this is an extremely helpful thing to get a break on a daily, was I got a membership to the YMCA. So the YMCA is, I feel like everybody has heard of the YMCA. It's kind of like the Boys and Girls Club, but it's a gym. They have a child care. They have for people who go to the gym. They have kids stuff, swim lessons. Um, if you don't have a YMCA, I'm sure it's a gym or something that has a child care get that membership honey get it because i was able to relieve myself from two to three hours a day after i was laid off and go to the ymca that was a part of our daily routine wake up ymca and i get my break i get a chance to work out i get a chance to just sit and relax i get a chance to decompress not be touched and that was just something that you just have to think outside the box. And these are just, just some tips that I wanted to give because a lot of times they say, oh, you get a break when the kids are asleep. But then at the same time, when the kids are asleep, people tell you you need to clean while they sleep. You need to do your homework. You need to do all this other stuff for yourself when you sleep. That is not rest. That's not healthy. So these are a few tips to get you a break outside of the traditional advice and outside of just one source. You know, expand your horizons and really just open up your options for you to have a break. So that's all for today y'all don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more let me know any other options in the comments i really want to hear from y'all because you know your girl need more options too because even though they're in daycare i just heard of a thing called kids night or parents night out in texas i will be paying extra money for that just to get a night out <laughs> okay um but yes that is all for today see you